Money don't make my world go round. I'm reaching out to a higher ground. That is the mantra of some clubs in the Premier League. And then on the other hand, money, money, money must be funny in a rich man's world. Give you a little sneak peek there. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the James Lawrence All Got channel. So I was on my Discord server the other day chatting to the lads and ladies about Brighton pumping Man United. And I thought about the amount of money that Brighton have spent and how well they've spent it as opposed to Manchester United. And it got me thinking, who has spent money wisely? And when it comes to money per point this season, who's wasted the most money? Fortunately, I have beautiful people and good friends in that Discord group. And they put together some lovely, lovely stats. Let's give you another little sweet sneak peek. There's a little bit. And we're going to go through it now. And so I'm going to highlight a few thoughts. I've also put a link down below to the data. Sounds more smart when you say an American accent. And you guys can have a look at it yourselves. Uh, because I think, uh, you know, when it comes to looking at those numbers, there are a few things that I think are interesting and uh, are things that I guess as football fans, we could look at our team and go, OK, maybe that's the way that they should move forward with certain things. But there's also you can see that there's different tactics at play as well. So what we'll look at is the market value per point. We're going to have a look at the salary per point. We've actually got salary per goal, if you want to have a look at it. We've also got purchase value per point. And it's just really, really interesting. And before we get into the video, if you like this kind of stuff or like a bit of a deeper look at some of these things, then please do hit the subscribe button and hit the like button. Even for the man, the myth, Adam Turner, who put this together. Massive thank you to Adam for helping me with this. And I'm going to just talk through it and just kind of explore it because I think there's probably going to be more questions as is normally the case on this channel. So please do get in, in the comments. Have a look at this and tell me what you see, because I kind of I see some bits and pieces, but you might see something very different. So first of all, market value per point. And obviously, there's going to be some certain culprits here that you would expect. And I think what's really, really interesting throughout is, first of all, with market value, this is kind of what uh, what people think this, you know, this squad is worth. And so with all of these graphs, generally, you should expect and the way we look at football a lot of the time is the teams with the money do the best because they can buy the best players. So really, when we're looking at these graphs, we should be expecting it to be, you know, like like this. You know, the market uh, market value per point should actually mirror the league table. So what's really interesting when you do look at it is you start to see the problems that teams have had and they accrue those problems through a few different things, be it spending too much on these players and then not being good enough, be it with the purchase value or the salary or both. And I will show you the the massive, massive gap. And I think the best thing you can take from this is that when you look at the Burnleys, the Brightons, the Brentfords, the Watfords, the Norwiches, and you just sort of laugh at them, take a second and I'll show you it because you can hear, see it clear as day is that this is a warped division now. Look, I love it. And I love, thank God it's football because with football, anyone can beat anyone on any day. And these are human beings. So just putting a price on the head doesn't mean that they're great. I think we've seen that numerous times. But I actually think this could save football a little bit. If you had a, a sort of points tally that needed, if, if, you, if it was down to points per million, and that was the league table, you would have yourself a fascinating, fascinating division where teams would go, well, this is our point. This is the amount we've spent. This is our purchase value and our salary that we spent on our squad. And so with that in mind, we need to get our points per million to one point. Seven, let's say 1.7 million per point. And that way, the teams like Man United and Man City and Chelsea and the amount they spent, you would have that handicap. I know this is a bit sort of pie in the sky and we'll dive into it more. But I just think it would be really, really interesting. So in terms of market value, Man United should be the best team. In terms of what, what their squad is supposedly worth. What is, of course, fascinating here is Everton struggling here. Leicester City 
in terms of market value. I think that you can look at that one way or another. Obviously, it's been a very disappointing season this season. But what I would also say is that the recruitment is often very young. And so the market value of those players is, is quite impressive as well. And then we look down the other end. Burnley should be right down the bottom. Brentford, and I get used to seeing that. Brentford, very smart with what they do in terms of how many points they're getting per their market value. Um, and Brighton as well. Get ready to see a lot of them. But you start to see that, again, if we draw a line, and we'll do this for all of them. That's not a very good line, but thank God it's straight in there. The market value, if you're getting points per million... This is a very difficult division and there are teams that have got money and the teams that don't. And so in terms of those numbers, by the way, in terms of market value, the highest one is Man United, 649 million apparently. And per point, in terms of the quality that the team's got, they're paying supposedly 11 million per point. Whereas Burnley are playing 3.65 million per point. Okay. Let's keep on moving because we've got lots to show you and it's really good. It's really, really interesting. I'm going to move along from that. Let's go to, let's go to salary. Okay. So these, this is the salary per point. This is where Man United look pretty woeful and it really pulls into focus a few things. Again, the difference between the top teams and the bottom teams. And again, when you turn your nose up and, and people do just remember what they've got to play with and how much easier that should make life. Fortunately, it's football and it doesn't work like that because we're all human beings, as I said. But as you can see here, Man United, absolutely astounding at the bottom of this table. They're at the bottom of a few of these tables. Are, is, are they bottom of all of these tables? Stick around to find out. In terms of estimated salary, 208 million for the season. So that's a £3.59 million pounds per point on salary this season. Shows that they're obviously massively underachieving. I think it also shows how why Leeds are, are down there and struggling. And maybe last year they were massively overachieving when you look at their estimated salary. Also in terms of the teams that go up. I think that's worth keeping in mind. Because when you do go up, you've probably got team, uh, lots of players on, on, on different wages, right? And so... Brentford, who's I think would have been down there pretty safely, but the difference between them and the next uh, best, 250k per point. That is that is such an achievement. It's amazing. Leeds, of course, went up recently as well. Um, so I think that's why their salary is quite is quite low per point, despite the disappointments obviously that the fans have had. But again, probably puts in perspective that you know you do get what you pay for generally, generally. So 11 million in terms of estimated salary. Another promoted team, 16 million there. Uh, in terms of other teams that have come up, Norwich, 22 million right down there in terms of estimated salaries as well. Um, and But Norwich have obviously struggled this season. And therefore, their points per estimated salary isn't that great. What I think is worth highlighting, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to literally highlight it, Brighton. Because Brighton, in terms of the points that they're getting alongside their estimated salary, shows how well run this club is. Because they're starting to move up the league, but they're doing so without getting as much juice from the squeeze. Also, Spurs in terms of salary, very, very strong as well. Obviously, much higher so, um, estimated salary, 55 million for the season. And I guess this is all estimated, but these are ballparks. So just bear with me. I th just think it's really, really interesting to see what they're kind of getting from it. But what I think is also worth saying is that although there is a massive difference, and this might be a tactic for people moving forward, is when we look at purchase value, so how much the squad cost in terms of transfer fees, there's a massive difference uh, from the top teams to the bottom teams. But... So here, 250k, okay, let's move that to the bottom. And again, the reason I want to draw that line is because, I mean, look look at how many of those you've got to do to get to Manchester United and, I guess, the teams around them as well. You know, if you look alongside it, Chelsea, obviously the next highest. Estimated salary of Everton is an absolute joke. You can see it here. But the difference per point, 3.5, sorry, 3.59 
per point for Man United, despite that graph and how outrageous it is, as opposed to 250k per point for Brentford. If you think of someone sort of more middling, let's look at Aston Villa, who's starting to have a little bit, little bit of a go. And actually, you can see, if you think, from here down, all between 1 and 2 million per point. Chelsea and Man United is where it starts to become gargantuan. But what I will say, 3.5 million per point for Man United, which I know is not great. But the gap between that and 0.25 is, you know, is 3, 3.25 million, right? If we then go to purchase value per point. Are we okay? We're okay. Purchase value per point is really, really interesting. And going into the summer, what's worth thinking about is... When you pay these transfer fees, kind of, is it worth it? You know, and, and where should you be spending your money? Should you be spending your money on the salaries of players? And this is something that, say, Juventus have done in the past. Or should you, do you just have to get it done, play that transfer fee um, to get those, those stars and, and maybe pay that premium for a player at a younger age to then kind of get the market value from them overall? And again, I'm going to show you the mix of these two together in just a second but this is purchase value per point this season so when it comes to this again some some interesting ones and some teams that are again when we're looking at it it should just go up as it does into the league table should be completely in line i think with the amount of money that you're spending on your squad i think that's a fair fair point to say but the point going on from the salary thing first and foremost i think that's interesting is and i think if we go oh Actually, I think if we go across one more. So first of all, the gap, and I guess this gets spent over time, so that's worth keeping in mind as well. But the gap between, again, Manchester United right down at the bottom, spending much more, not as severe if you look at the graph in terms of the amount of money that they spent, because, of course, Man United have spent a hell of a lot as well. 692 million <laughs> on the squad. And uh, they could still be in the Conference League. Might not happen. We'll see. But at the very least, it's going to be Europa League. It's certainly a lot of money that's obviously not been spent that well um, because they're not getting where they want to be. Because if you are going to spend the most in the league, you expect trophies, right? But 692 million, that's 11.95 per point. If we look at Man City, who, let's be honest, have got absolutely everything out of their, their team. 9.86 per point. And I guess the trophies come, the money comes from Champions League and all that stuff, which helps keep the, the wheels turning. But what is interesting is that uh, although the graph doesn't look as severe here with Brentford at the bottom, Man City, let's use, right? The difference in terms of the money that you spend on transfer fees per point. And now this might be able to be divided over three, four years if those guys work out for you. But it's a bit more of a risk. And the gap between Man City... And Brentford is 8 million. Whereas if you remember when it was the salary per point, it was 3.5 million to 0.25. So much less in terms of salary. And as, as time moves on, it'd be interesting that I wonder if there's going to be teams that go, I'm not worried about, I don't want to spend money on transfers. I want to know someone who, I want to get someone who I'm going to get a good few years out of. I'll give them that extra bit of salary, um, but I won't have to pay that transfer fee. That all gets a little bit murky, I guess, when you then want to have players with resale value. And so that's the thing. There's, there's no real answers here, right? I just think it's fascinating to see that you've got the gamble of a transfer. But this is what I mean. If you buy, and this is where Everton have just got it so, so wrong. So, so wrong. For a team that wants to be in the European places, but have spent 8.2 million. You know, if you think of where they are in the league, at the top of this table should be the teams right at the bottom, right? And Everton are up here they're fourth it's crazy i mean that's that's so badly drawn but, oh hang on you see what I'm, you see my point right so it just shows how badly everton have done but also who they've bought they're by they bought too many players the one of the few that they've probably got their money out of is someone like richarlison spent 50 million on the guy but he was really young so you have the resale value I say it so many times, and it's so obvious, and it's been there for Football Manager for time and memoriam, but people just don't do it. They just go and just splash cash, and it's dangerous. It's so, so dangerous. Let me show you something else. If you're enjoying this one, hit the like button. 
so again purchase value comparison so in terms of the money that's spent and i've shown you that's in the last graph and then the the points per um, purchase value per point again it just shows you the teams that haven't been recruiting well but also a team that's done it a little bit different um liverpool which is interesting so they have been they have spent that um they haven't been getting the same amount from the money that they've spent you would say but again if we divide this over time that's where it looks like smart business really really smart business and daniel levy for a team that could be getting in the champions league yes you've got lucky i guess with Harry Kane, uh, you know, coming through the ranks and a few other players that have been there for quite a long time, Eric Dyer, Ben Davies, over the years. But they haven't spent that much. And even Hung Min Son, you know, what a buy he was because this purchase value comparison, it really pulls into focus buying players and then those players working out for the long term. And I think that's that's just really, really interesting. Again, I think that Brighton, again, with the money that they spent, but the points that they get, and then you're doing that and not just surviving, you're actually exciting the team, playing a good brand of football and starting to dream of of um, European football, I think is it just shows how, how, how well they've done this season. Also here, I thought it was interesting, is that you are starting to see these sort of certain areas of which teams are going to look to spend money and there are levels to it. So, for example, Villa... And it shows how well Liverpool have done. Six million per point. Villa, Newcastle, Leicester, Arsenal. You know, some of those places, you're seeing the different ends of the of the band of it, right? Arsenal kind of at the top of it, spending a bit, bit more money. Newcastle now starting to spend that little bit of money. Villa having a bit of a go as well. So it just then shows how well the likes of West Ham and Wolves have done. It's about being cute and clever, I think, a lot of the times. Um, because they've got more points per million this season. But again, Brighton, two million per point for them to be where they are, looking for that top 10 finish. Absolutely phenomenal. And Everton, just an absolute mess financially. And that has to change. That has to change. But the biggest culprits, of course, and they're able to do it, which is uh, they're very, very lucky they're able to do it, is Man United, far and away the worst absolutely far and away the worst it's it's terrible you know in terms of the purchase value and the salaries that, that go back to that salaries 208 million estimated yearly salary for the squad you know from man city on 142 chelsea 162 it's interesting you start to see these bands so you need to play 100 you need to play between 125 million and 170 million if you want to be a champions league team generally so again when we look at it it's absolutely phenomenal what Spurs have done with an estimated salary of 55 million. Crazy. It really, it's really enlightening, this, I think, personally. You guys might disagree, and that's fine. Um, this is a salary and purchase value combined per goal, so not per point. We'll show you that in just a second. Uh, once again, uh, <laughs> so the combined purchase value and salary of these guys, it's absolutely amazing. Over a billion for Manchester City in terms of the money that they've spent. Man United as well. But again, Man United far and away the worst per goal. 15 million, 15.81 million per goal this season for Man United um, going into the final game of the season. Brentford. $1.73 million. 15 1.73. Yes, the aims are different, but I, th I just think this really pulls into focus that it's not it's not a fair playing field a lot of the time. And so when you know when Brentford do beat Arsenal or beat some of those teams, when you see those changes, it really is totally unacceptable for those top teams to, to be doing that. Unless you think yeah, it's obviously not all about money, and clearly it isn't. And that, that's the that's the great hope with all of this is that it's not all about money, but it also shows that Man United have been an absolute pile of wasted money they've literally just burnt money um through the recruitment through the squad building through the salaries that they've given them and it, you are it is a fine edge with that but when we come to the big one here it is so salary and purchase value combined per point i can say to you that every single point that man united have accrued this season 
has cost them 15.54 million. For Brentford, 1.76 million. <laughs> and then the likes of Liverpool there, 7.69 million. And Man City, 11.45 million. And so that, you know, when we talk about the Man City and the Liverpool thing and people say Man City don't get the credit they deserve, look, they're a really good team, but it's there for you in black and white. In terms of the purchase value and the salary that Matt Liverpool have spent, Liverpool should be one, two, three, four, five, sixth in the league. And they're not they're far and away one of the best teams in the league, as opposed to Man United, who have spent four million more per point in terms of purchase value and salary than Man City and find themselves where they are this season. So there you have it, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button as well. As I say, links down below if you want to check out all the data. And uh, lots of love. Ta-da.